This conference will now be recorded. So good afternoon, everybody, or good evening, um, or whatever time of day you happen to be listening to this later. Uh, it's December 1st, high risk recurrent advanced uh, prostate cancer virtual support group. And um, a couple of things today. One is the meeting won't go on that long because we have to vacate the room. Um, we're meeting on the first and third Tuesdays because of the calendar glitch this month uh, and to avoid successive meetings on um, following nights. Um, and the second thing is that there was a um, long awaited FDA approval today that both um, Herb and Len um, have, are responding to. Um, Herb's going to tell us a little bit about that approval. Um, Len has already written a blog post. So if you're not on our blog, please sign up ancan.org, go to resources, go to the blog and sign up on the right hand side. If you are on the blog, you've probably seen it already. Um, it's very significant. And um, when Herb's done, I'll just tell you a little bit about how we as ANCAN have followed up. So Herb, I'll turn it over to so, you. I, mean, I, I, thought, let, I thought I would let Lynn do this because he wrote the blog. So, and I can just follow up, whatever. You guys sort it out, go ahead. however you want to do it. All right, I'll talk. I mean, you wrote the blog, I'll talk. <laughs> it basically, we got FDA approval today, or we, for PSMA PET, gallium 68 scans. So that means now it can be used. We, we don't have to have these discussions about who's going to do it and who's going to pay for it, because if it's FDA approved, why the insurance companies are now going to pay for this. So. The, the, the approval goes to UCLA and UCSF. They were the people that came in with the clinical data showing efficacy in two areas. Now, this is where the FDA approval may be specific or nonspecific. One area it approved in was for diagnosing newly, di newly identified patients to see, quote, if additional therapy was, where additional therapy could, could be curative. That was in the FDA announcement. The other part of the FDA announcement was, a, was to look for METs in advanced prostate cancer. One part of the announcement that I didn't see, was hoping for, was to use it as eff for efficacy of treatment. That is not in there. So the question goes, if you've had a PSMA scan and you're getting treated, you know, we, we have other scans that we use to monitor the efficacy, whether that approval carries over to future scans, I'm not clear. So the other thing that I discussed with Lynn and both of us are not clear, this is only approval for UCSF and UCLA. It's not universal. But the FDA announcement and Len's blog correctly says, uh, we hope the companies will jump in to sort of make a kit for gallium 68 PSMA scans so that other places can do it. Now, Rick also brought up one issue, and I don't, Len, maybe you might want to jump in on this, although he's, he's, I don't see him right now, is the difference between gallium 68 and fluorine, fluorine 18. They're both PET emitters, so that's why they can be both used in PET scans to localize radioactivity. The difference is in half-life, and the other difference is in how it's made. To make fluorine-18, you need a linear accelerator. To make gallium-68, you, you can use a generator. So in general, it's going to be easier in the future to make for a localized place that doesn't have a linear accelerator around to make gallium 68. So I think it's very good for all of us. There are questions that remain about how universal and how fast it gets out there. But uh, Len, did you have anything else to add? 
Len had to go out and pick up a package. He got a phone call. Oh. <laughs> He's gone down because he sent me a note. He sent it to everybody, actually. So oh, I didn't see that. That's OK. Right. Um, He's going to be right things, back. A so anybody things, have questions? Yeah, and there's a couple of things I'd like to add. First of all, um, this approval is actually called a drug approval. But you might want to say, what, what, what sort of drug is this? Well, what has been approved is the, is the PSMA um, 11. Um, I, I, I'm not sure of the right word for this. And oh, so it's a correct, okay. but I call it a what's been approved, Right. What's been approved is a radioactive ligand attached to through a ligand, through a, a linker, to something that binds to PSMA. Right. So that is the predecessor of essentially a pharmaceutical that could be also used for treatment because if you change, as we know with lutetium, actinium, attached to things that attach to PSMA, that's what's being investigational for treatment. Is that what okay. you were going to say, Rick? Is that yeah? And 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 I want, and you should all know, this is this is a not the same compound, for example, as the six one seven, which is what um, uh, I think Peter had. Um, and there's another one, R uh, one and R two. So there are mm -hmm. a whole bunch of these compounds that different companies are working on, um, and that they all do much the same thing. They bind to a radioactive agent on one side and they bind to PSMA on the other side. And so when they're injected, they're attracted to any cell that expresses PSMA, mm -hmm. mostly prostate cells, but not only prostate cells. And um, they have this radioactive agent on the other end. And so they light up when you take, um, when, when you swallow a certain compound or a certain compound is infused into you, it makes, it makes these um, cells light up. And that's, that's that's essentially how it works. Now, this is only for the screening agent. This is not yet for a therapeutic agent. And and those of you who have been on this call for a long time know that we, we've talked extensively about lutetium one seventy seven, and that we've had men in this group, and very sadly, men who are no longer with us in this group, who have used lutetium one seventy seven. I can think of three. I can think of four right off the top of my head. Um, the lutetium 177 is supposed to kill off the cancer. All this is going to do, and all the approval is for, is to show where the cancer is. Now, we can anticipate that given the, um, the, 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 the theory of this, um, of this ligand, of this agent, this drug, whatever you, the right expression is, it will be used in other ways. And that, as Len rightly said, um, that there will be a lot more companies trying to get into the market and get their agents approved. We don't know which the best agent is. We don't know if one agent is more efficient than another agent. We're going to finish up having discussions like, is apalutamide better than enzalutamide? We, we don't know that yet. Um, but but it is still a huge step because we've known for the longest time that um, PSMA is really a game changer. The, the identification of PSMA as an antigen on the, on, 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 on the cell and the fact that we can attract to it is a game changer. It's really interesting. I had a one discussion with um, a really good buddy of mine who was diagnosed about a year after I was. And um, he's a very, he's a, very comfortable individual and he's done some pocket funding he was treated at ucsf he's done some pocket funding for trials and i confirm with him today that many years ago it was money that he very generously donated i mean not a huge amount of money but a small amount of money that allowed it allowed trials to be done that would lead to being able to justify a clinical trial so, you know, we, we have a, a fairly close association with this. And as you, m many, some of you may know, um, 
you know, Peter Carroll, who we know very, very well, Peter Kafka's doctor and, uh, and others, um, I believe it was his trials that were used. One was called Osprey. There were, there were two trials. They were both named after birds. One was for men being diagnosed immediately with metastatic, and the other was for recurrent. And one was called Osprey, and I forget what the other one was called. But anyway, you know, we, we followed this for a really long time. So for us, it's a big occasion. And, and I did send a note to Peter today to congratulate him. And although I don't know Tom Hope personally, I know a lot of people he works with personally, mm -hmm. I sent him a note too. And, and we're just thrilled. And we're thrilled. And, not, and not, it's not just UCSF, it's UCLA. It's a lot of money that PCF poured into this, which we're very grateful for. There's been a lot of players. I feel like one of those, I feel like one of those academics, Herb, who has to come, who has to acknowledge and congratulate all the team. But it is really right. a, a lot of people. It's not just UCSF and UCLA. So um, I did do one. I mentioned this to Rick in an email. I found a very interesting article. It's a review. It talks all about PSMA and the future of PSMA. And one of the things that I found is there's a group of surgeons in Germany who are using PSMA with a radioactive ligand, a lower level radioactive ligand, while they're doing surgery. Oh, wow. So they're, you're looking for the disappearance of radioactivity in the lymph nodes while they're dissecting lymph nodes. And they feel that that's more potentially more curative than just taking out a lymph node without knowing what's going on. Wow. So there's wow. maybe another future use of PSMA. All right, guys. Well, look, what we do have to finish on time today. So I, I do want to move on. But if anybody has any pressing questions, and I mean, I one maybe I can anticipate one, which is how do we get this? I think the answer at this point is we don't really know. I know Cancer ABCs has sent out something and, and they're humming and hawing. Um, I suspect that it will be immediately available um, and, and, and F, it'll be Medicare, Medicare approved now that it's FDA approved, and it will probably be Im immediately available through, um, through UCSF and UCLA. But right now, we don't know where else it's going to be available. I don't think it's anywhere just yet, but that'll all come to light. So. Um, and it's it's also going to be a game changer for drugs. So another area that I've been really active today is um, I've been talking with Bayer. Um, some of I don't know if any of you were on that debacle of a support group leader call um, last week with us too. Bayer um, presented Nubeka. Daralutamide. Um, suffice to say, both Bayer, Bayer and us two did a really crummy job, and it was a very, very poor infomercial. And um, I tried to stay out of it as long as I could, but they were just feeding bad information to 40 group leaders, and I jumped in and made the, um, you know, made some points. And I got slammed for it by both us two and Bayer, and so I took care of that later in, in ways that, as we do at ANCAN. Um, but one of the points that I wanted to make and somebody else made is that we're no longer in a world where metastatic prostate cancer is binary, either non-metastatic or it's metastatic. That isn't the case anymore. I mean, we've all known that, but the drug companies chose to ignore it and really what we have now is a gray is a gradient so technically what has happened is that a drug like Nubeca is going to be very very difficult for anybody to get it because as PSMA scanning becomes more prevalent most men are going to be metastatic somewhere and the way that we've gotten around it to date and this is where Bayer sales shot me down and, and, and us two said I was out of line. The way we've gotten around it is we've told men that they need to go get a Technetium 99 scan, which is what Len did. 
because his metastasis, whilst it showed up on a PSMA scan, it didn't show up on a technetium 99 scan. And now with PSMA being approved, the, it, we don't have anything that's really non-metastatic any, anymore. I mean, there's, there's almost going to be not, there's going to be so few people that are non-metastatic. They're going to have to redefine. And so I, I wrote to Bayer today. I, I've been going back and forth with Bayer um, for the last week. But I wrote to Bayer today, and I said, "You guys are going to have to go in and get and get that FDA approval changed and updated." Um, and, and, and I think it'll be really important because otherwise, I don't know how, how people a few months from now are going to even be able to access Nubecker as it stands right now. And that bothers me because it's a terrific drug. So, um, questions? Uh, I, I just want to make a comment because earlier today, as I've been feverishly trying to obtain a PSMA scan, uh, through more or less Sloan Kettering and their process and hopefully avoiding having to pay $7,000 for their cost. Um, I did speak with uh, or communicated with Aetna, my insurance company, and uh, initially the insurance company had said that, they, that the PSMA scans, as long as they're medically necessary, would be approved. Then, uh, you know, there's these CPT codes and there's the CPT code for a PET scan is 78815, I believe. There's also a CPT code for PSMA. So I went back to Rutgers, <coughs> where I'm being treated, and, and their financial responsibility department contacted Aetna. And Aetna said, well, we approved the, uh, the PET scan, but we won't approve the PSMA because it's not a proven therapy. So. But in the meantime, I'm still I'm still pursuing it. At, at worst case, they they broke down between the cost of the PET scan versus the uh, gallium 68, and the PET scan was a little over six thousand dollars. So that's the biggest expense that they say that they would cover versus approximately a, only a thousand dollars for the PSMA. I say only because my experience with the Aximum PET scan, where I had a lot of problems getting it ultimately reimbursed, but the maximum portion of the PET scan was over $4,000, so more expensive uh, than the look, PSM. But without getting into the weeds, because we, we know these issues, did they tell you today that it's not an approved therapy, or this is what they told you in the past? This morning. This morning they told you, and that was even after they'd read the approval, the FDA approval. Well, you know, we don't know that. <laughs> okay, so I think I think you you know I think it's you're making the point, but I think you've got to allow this information to filter through, Carl. Right? right. So I don't I don't want people to start come away from this and say, oh, Aetna's not even going to approve PSMA. We don't know yet. <laughs> this what Carl's working trying to get something done, and the chances are the people who are saying yes or no to whatever's going on. They don't even. They haven't even read the approval. The approval even came, only came out this morning. So, you know, time. Rick, I, Rick, I can add to that just a little bit because, of course, I'm working through it. I don't want to spend a lot of time on it. I understand Paul's comment. I just talked to him yesterday. Was that it was going to be approved, but it'll take three months, mid March, before these insurance companies are on board. So, may not be the case for UCLA and UCSF, but. It's going to take a while for it to become readily available for most guys. Right. So. Right. Right. I think that that's that's very helpful. Len, is there any? I know you missed any anything. Is there are there any take home points you want to make? We're not hearing you, Len. Even though you're not muted. Yeah, we, I mean, we, my only other point, Rick, would be that I think demand is going to exceed supply for quite some time. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. All right, let let's do this. We have one. Uh, I see one new name, and we have two people on the telephone. Um, let's first identify the folks who are on the on the telephone. Who um who has called in? 
David uh, Mosley uh, is on one line. Okay, David, okay. just speak up again. Oh, speak up again, David. It's David Moslin. I'm on the what? line and uh, Okay, O one. So O one is David Moslin. Um, and uh, and O two, O two is uh, good old good old Tony. I haven't been able to uh, be with you guys the last couple of weeks. I hope all you guys are doing uh, a little bit better than you were the last time uh, okay. I was with Thank you guys. Thank you, Tony. So yeah, we we, so we we noticed we hadn't heard from you, so um, so we're 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 glad to we're glad to hear from you. I don't have Jake on the call today, so I'll do it. Can you fill in, can you fill in the names, please, for me? Thank you very much. Um, and the new gentleman that I don't think we've ever spoken to before is is Peter H. Peter, have you have you been? You're muted right now. Is this the first time you're on this call? Yes, this is the first time I'm on this call. Yes, perfect. I, I uh, was you know uh, alerted to this support group from another support group I've been attending. Fantastic. I'm just looking for additional information, different perspectives. That's all. Okay, or, you know, well, apply to my own situation, that's all. Okay, well, you came to the right place, as you probably already gathered. I gathered that. About PSMA. Um, what, we, what we ask new people to do, and, and it's, a, it's totally up to you if, you if you would like to participate or not, is we'll give you some priority at the beginning of the meeting. Um, tell us a little bit about um, the path you've traveled to this point in time and uh, where you are um, and what questions you have in mind. Um, some, some of the things we'll ask you to address is the, the nature of your original diagnosis, um, where you live, where you're being treated, how old you are, the usual old garbage. All right, <laughs> well, I mean, I am, uh, I'm 55 now. Um, I was diagnosed at 50. Um, Gleason score of six. Um, I was, uh, I opted for IMRT radiation. Um, I did talk to several different um, doctors and uh, providers before settling on the IMRT. Um, at that point, my PSA had reached, I believe it was six. Um, maybe seven, I'm not 100% sure now, I don't remember. Um, after the radiation, it went down to maybe two. That was three years ago. Um, over the past year, my PSA has rocketed skyward, um, but any scanning that I've done, CT, uh, bone scan, I've done two of the PET scans with the Axiom or Axiom, however you say that. All come back negative. Um, my last PSA was a month ago, and I'm at 32 now. Okay. I am scheduled right now for a follow-up CT and bone scan. We'll see. Other than that, I feel fine. And where do you live? I live in New Jersey, um, in, uh, in, Ro in Robbinsville, New Jersey. Um, so I, I, I went to um, the IMRT in um, Lawrenceville on uh, Route 1, the I, uh, UPA. Okay. UP, UPA, did you say? UCA, Urinary Care Alliance, I think it was. Okay. So it was, it was essentially, um, it was a local, it was a local. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. Um, and... Do you have anything specifically on your mind that you'd like to ask these guys? Um, not specific. I'm just really just, uh, I'm assuming that even though all of my scans to date have come back negative, um, that it's not from a lack of looking, but at, at some point I'm going to, you know, I'm going to win the prize. Um, so I'm just kind of here to hear other stories and, you know, kind of prepare for options and what I may be having to deal with. Who, who would like to kick off for um, in, in, Peter. in addressing Peter? Hello, Peter, Peter, this is a different Peter. Sorry. Can you break it up? I can't hear that at all. You're breaking up, Peter. 
Did you have a second opinion on your biopsy to confirm uh, I, it was a three plus three? Well, I, that, the biopsy was back when I was probably 40 out of 50. It was a three plus three. I have not had a follow up biopsy. Um, I have concerns about biopsy just because of how graphic, we'll say, the aftermath of a biopsy is. Um, and I figured. Oh, oh, that Peter, Peter, hold on. The question was how did you get a second opinion on your biopsy? Not, a, not another biopsy. Did you get oh. a second opinion? Actually, no, I didn't. I, I, I went with my uh, my primary care and my urologist. Um, we did send the um, samples out for the genomic testing. It came back as low risk. Um, so I didn't want to do anything drastic. I wanted to try to address the problem without doing anything too, not to do anything too drastic. But to answer your question, no, I did not get a second opinion on the diagnosis. Okay, so so the, 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 the source of that question is that it's very unusual for a 3 plus 3 to spread. Um, it happens in probably around half a percent of the population based on studies done at Mayo. Right. Um, half a percent of the people that have 3 plus 3s. And so... I think what Peter's saying is, how sure are we that original was a three plus three? Maybe it was. I, I have three. my doubts about that also. Right, but I'm Thank not you. sure at this point. Uh, the only place to make a real difference is that the rise of your PSA is not attributable to prostate cancer, but attributable to something else. But since you're asymptomatic. It's probably, if, if it was something else, that something else would have caused a symptom, like a urinary blockage or something right. or the other. So I, I think that probably the 3 plus 3 wasn't a very good reading, um, or but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Well, no, at this no. point. Um, who, who else is, would like okay. to jump in on this? Peter, do you have anything else you'd like to add? No, but uh, other than the fact that when I did a urologist to go to a center of excellence, that biopsy shouldn't be that traumatic. Uh, you know, someone does get an infection or something, but we might be able to get a different biopsy from a real professional that doesn't have any trauma associated with it. Uh, it might be too late, too old to get a second opinion on the original one. But you could send away, uh, you could ask if, if it doesn't Hopkins matter, Peter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Well, that's that's, Peter, what, that's, why that's you want, news. Why do you want it? What difference does it what difference does it make at this point? What right. the different first of all, we don't know where his we don't know where the additional cancer is, so we don't know where to biopsy. We can't biopsy the gland because the gland's been radiated. So okay. we can't biopsy the gland. We don't have anything else that we can see, and it doesn't matter if it was a five plus five. Right. What difference is it going to make? What we needed to know at this point is where's the cancer? Is it cancer that's causing this PSA to go up? And where is it? It doesn't matter where, where the... It was wrong. We know it was wrong because it spread, and it's very, very unlikely that ever that's happens. True. Person. It's a PSMA scan. That's all you can do. Right. So I think Peter raises two really good points, and a couple of guys are going to develop that. One is, Doctor, are you currently still at this UCA? Could somebody please mute caller number four just for the time being, and then we'll get to them because we're getting a lot of feedback from them. Um, so. Um, who is the doctor you're currently seeing? Is it this still this um, urology associates? Yes, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, my, my urologist is Carlin, Gary Carlin. Okay, so you're still seeing a urologist. So your treatment is still being guided by a urologist. Is, is that right. right? Right. Yes, that's correct. So there are two points I think that 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 are that are important here that um, have been raised. The first is where you're getting treated. And the second is 
um, how can you get a more refined scan than the Axiomin scan that might tell us what's going on? Who would like to who'd like to take up either one of those points? The Carl. Carl, go ahead. Um, first, I wanted to let you know that I'm in Monroe Township, which is very close to Robbinsville. Okay. There's another person on the call here. I see his face. Alan is also in Monroe Township. <laughs> so um, I'm being treated at the Rutgers Cancer Institute in New Brunswick. Um, I think my recommendation, as well as maybe some others, is that you need to graduate from seeing you a your urologist to going to an oncologist. Um, and uh, I, I would definitely recommend that that be one of the places you consider because it would be relatively close to where uh, you live. And, and the fact that you're in Robinsville, of course, as I had done in Monroe, being in Monroe Township, uh, I went to several second opinions and ultimately ended up at uh, at workers as I, I felt comfortable with with what they've been doing for me. And I've been there for about two and a half years. So I, I would definitely recommend that you consider going beyond the urologist. Urology Care Alliance, uh, my urologist was part of that alliance or is part of that alliance. He offered to give me a biopsy in his office. And I right. said to him, no, thank you, because right. there's an MRI fusion guided box biopsy. Again, that's water under the bridge. I don't want to go into detail, but for me, that was a better option. Now, an, an oncologist, is uh, to, to address cancer. Yes. Now, as my, my understanding right now in the world that I live in, I currently do not have cancer because the, skin, the PET scan with the Axiom would have highlighted that, right? Was this your first Axiom or you had more than one? I've had two. I had one in October and I had one last October, both negative. Okay. Who, who who would like let where where's Len or Peter maybe to address that one? Len, are you with us? His screen is dark. Who who'd like to explain to Peter maybe what's going on and why we think an oncologist is the right doc? Anybody want to take that one on? I think other I, than me, John, I could make a comment. John, go ahead, please. <clears throat> When, whenever we get a test, um, the test has what are called specificity and sensitivity. And one is, means when it finds something, is it really that something? And the other one means, if it doesn't find something, does that prove that it's not there? Now, if your Aximan scan found something, it would be quite likely to be cancer. Okay. So that means that a positive test really means something. But if your Aximan scan, like mine, didn't find anything, unfortunately, that does not mean that you don't have cancer. Because the Aximan scan lacks the sensitivity to pick up cancers that are b bigger than, uh, I don't know what size, to tell you the truth, but you know, maybe a BB or something like that. So your negative scan, unfortunately, does not mean you're cancer-free. Okay. Okay, so it's, the axiom is not able to pick up um, small areas of cancer. That's yes, correct. Sir. Okay. That, that's correct. Anybody, Peter, you want to say? This is confusing to me because if you think you do not have cancer, why did, who recommended doing uh, radiation. Why did you do radiation? Um, well, because the, 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 the samples of, the, the, of my biopsy indicated that I had cancer in, I think, four quadrants. But the Gleason score was a three plus three, which was a six. 50%. That's, still, that's still cancer. It's just slow, gro slower growing cancer. But right. by definition, a Gleason right. means you have cancer. Right. But, and again, in, in retrospect, I probably should have left it alone. Um, but that's not where I live now. That, that already happened. So I, I, can't, I can't go back to that. What I'm concerned about now is 
I don't want to make another decision based from fear. I don't want to do that again. So, so I would get, I would get, not go to the urologist. I would find, as Carl said, a medical oncologist, probably one that specializes in prostate cancer. Whether okay. or not they think they have it or not, because they don't have uh, skin in the uh, treatment game in terms of radiation or surgery or anything like that. And because you've got a mysterious situation that's going to take some real thoughtfulness and, um, and probing. And I would, I would get an expert involved in it. So that you've got, you know, someone, someone that from an institution who's not trying to make money off of you, or, uh, but willing to explore with you and find out what the hell's going on. Right. I agree. Right. I agree with that. My wife, my, my wife worked at Memorial, and her statement was, "Cancer is a profit-making business. They're all looking to make money." Yes. So I agree with but, that. Be that as it may. I think I agree 100% with Peter. You need more sophisticated clinicians involved in your case. Why is the PSA going up when you think you don't have cancer? So I wouldn't even stop in New Brunswick. I just take the train all the way to Penn Station and then to Memorial, to be honest. These guys at major cancer centers are the best diagnosticians in the world they will they can figure it out you mean slow so counter my advice would be yeah. huh you mean yes, slow yes. Counter. yes yes okay. i do mean memorial sloan kettering and i don't mean memorial sloan kettering satellite i mean memorial sloan kettering on east 68th street right right and i think you there are people we know there who could likely figure this out Right, so a couple of suggestions for you, Peter. Um, you're gonna probably finish up needing to get more sophisticated scanning, like the scan that was approved earlier on today. Mm -hmm. um, and that's being, we know that's being trialed um, in um, either at Wild Cornell or at Memorial Sloan Kettering, and, and may, maybe in conjunction. Uh, I'd like to give you, um, we have a chat window, by the way, and I forgot to tell everybody this, but if you, if you click on the little bubble at the top of the chat window, um, and um, you will see, it, it will open a box, and there's information that gets put in that box. Um, and one of the things, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to put in three names. Unfortunately, I cannot, I, I can't give you the link. I have the links, but I can't give you. I'm going to give you three names from three different hospitals. And I would say that any of these names are good people for you to try and get an appointment with. Okay. Okay. Um, the first one is Dr. O at um, Mount Sinai, who is Lens Doc and he can talk about Dr. O. Um, the second one um, is Scott Tagawa, who's at Weill Cornell, across, across the street from, um, uh, from Memorial Sloan Kettering. And the third one um, at Memorial Sloan Kettering, uh, we'll give you two names, either Dana Rathcott, who is very, very good and usually fairly easy to get an appointment with, um, or Michael Morris, who um, is also excellent, but you may have to wait longer. Now, all those guys are called medical oncologists. They're going to probably finish up either working with you on trials that they have, where they can do a PSMA scan to try and find out what's going on, or they may refer you to a radiologist, probably not, or they may bring a radiologist onto your team. But the bottom line is this, you had cancer. You had cancer. It was prostate cancer. And usually in a three plus three, not usually, but with a three plus three, there is a chance of cure, meaning it will never come back. 
Right. If it was anything more than a three plus three, we don't talk about cure, we talk about a remission. Sometimes mm -hmm. durable, sometimes not durable. You probably had some four in there somewhere. We don't know where. And so what's happened is the cancer's come back, but we can't see it right now. If once we see it, then you've got all kinds of options in how you'll treat it. You'll come back here, you'll talk to some of these guys, and we'll give you all kinds of ideas and we'll tell you if the doc's suggesting something good, something bad, if you, if you forgot something, if you overlooked something. These guys are a veritable brains trust. Okay. So um, you first of all need to get to the medical oncologist who's likely to track, track that down. Len, are you back with us? Yes. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Great. Just can't see you. Okay. Len, do you do you think Doc? Oh, we can see you now. Do you think Doctor O would? Who who would you suggest to to Peter out of um, O Tagawa and Rathcock? You know them all. Um, Doctor O. I would recommend Doctor O. Yeah, he's really good. And he's the right sort of doctor because he's a real sleuth. Okay. And they're, they're all great okay. doctors. They're all in centers of excellence. Um, and where is Dr. O? Where is he? Where is he working out of? Mount, Mount Sinai. Sinai. Mount Sinai? Okay. So at yeah. uh, 102nd Street and Madison. Yeah, I know where it is. I know where it is. Yeah. yeah. Right. This is Alan. I've seen Dr. O twice now. And, uh, I uh, certainly would agree that he'd be a very good one and probably easy enough to get an appointment with. Okay. And, and Alan, you, you have, I mean, you're, you're kind of in this, in this ball game. I mean, you, you, you don't really know where your cancer comes from, but it won't go away, right? It's there. Well, but it's, I know. Yeah. I have that recurrence. Yeah. And I'll get another PSA next week uh, for the fourth quarter of the year. Yeah, and so, you know, certainly seeing the medical oncologist going that route is likely, and it's worth uh, it's worth doing that. And probably the next step um, that might be suggested by the oncologist will be to get one of the PSMA scans. It certainly wouldn't hurt. It's better than the Aximin, and um, it may not be approved quite yet in New York by the time you want it, but you might still find a clinical trial that'll do it. Um, and so you won't have to pay for it. Um, what's Peter's idea. PSA now? I'm sorry. What What's Peter's PSA now? Thirty two. Okay. Yeah. PSMA should tell a story. Yeah, easily. Thirty two. Yeah. yeah, I'm surprised Axman didn't pick that up. And nothing. Right. That's That's what I'm reading, and that's what I'm being told. That yeah. It should have picked up. Yeah. So we still have to move on. Because we, 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 we've really got to move on because we, 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 we've got a shorter meeting today. But um, uh, Peter, um, if you can provide us your email address, you sure. can send it. Uh, you can either give it to me now, you can put it in the chat window, whatever's the easiest. We'll I, can, you. I can put it in the chat window. I'm not sure how to do that. Oh, here we go, right here. Here we go. Okay. Thank you. So you can send it just to me. You can send it to everyone. If, I don't care. I'll send it to everybody. I don't care. Okay. So put it in there. We'll make sure you get on the list. We meet every week. We'll be on your case to make sure you call Dr. O next week. You, you don't get away with much in this group. I'm going I'm to need Dr. O's contact information. Okay. Um, Len, do you, do, you, do you have Dr. O's website that you can, his profile and website? I have it, but I, I can't get to it right now. I'll put it in the chat box. Put it in the chat, because otherwise I gotta go get a crayon. Yeah, okay. And um, somebody had asked about prostatitis. We'd asked Peter earlier on if he has symptoms and he's asymptomatic. I, 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 but that's, that's the, the, the weird part. I have no symptoms. That's right. I didn't even get up during the night to pee. Right. So. You know that that's what I said before. So we, we, we he's asymptomatic. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving on. Um, one caller, we're going to unmute you right now. Uh, I'm going to unmute you right now. Hold on a minute. Where's my? Uh, uh, we've got a caller who.
came in yeah. and we had to mute you. Caller 04. Yes, you're unmuted. It's Somebody me. It, it's, it, it, it's me. It's me. It's me, Rick. It's David Mosen. I dropped the other oh, call. I called back in. Sorry. Sorry, sorry to bother you. Okay. Peter, on the job, please. You're on the job. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> all right. And um, I'm going to run down. I don't know we'll get to everybody today. I do know that Frank Babish is going to be up first because, and somebody else. Who did it? Oh, and Carl. Carl's going to be up first, and Frank Babish is going to be up second. I can tell you that Carl, right now. Just, Rick, Rick yes. just one very, very basic thing for Peter. I don't think there's a man on this call that doesn't have a medical oncologist. I mean, that's okay. quite frankly, that's where I started. Right. Uh, so, you know, it's very basic, but I just wanted Peter to know that there are all of us go to the centers of excellence and to a medical oncologist and a radiology oncologist. It's just right. so he knows that we've been there. Yeah, That's no, so, yeah, he, 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 I think he's got it, Jerry, that he's got to switch his doc and, and we'll be, we'll be chasing him to do that before this, before this gets out of hand. So, so, um, so we've got Carl up first, we've got Frank Fabish up second, and now I'm going to run down, and um, if we don't get to you today, I promise that we will get to you. Um, we'll we'll elevate you next time. But I do have to say, no, not that there's any preference in here. But I noticed our friend from the wilds of uh, Wyoming who got a haircut since we last saw him. Um, I think I like him better with the long hair. Joe, um, would you like some time tonight? Oh, no, I'm good. I'm just uh, living proof that things can get better four years with stage four and <laughs> Zytiga and Lupron. And this week I'm building an ice boat. So, you know, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> I saw, I'll look at it afterwards. And we love to have, we love to have you here, long hair or no long hair, we're so thrilled. Oh. We did forget to say one thing to Peter uh, Harker. Uh, Ken Anderson, tell Peter about your group. You know, Rick, I wasn't going to take up any time. I'm just now sending him a note in the chat window. Okay, well, just, just well, you can tell, you can, you can speak up. It's good. All right, Peter, I, I can agree with everyone. I'm a younger guy. I can agree with everyone, everyone, everyone that's stated you should find one of the centers of excellence and get get it figured out. But we do have an under 60 group that meets the first, I mean, sorry, the second Thursday of the month in this room. Okay. And it's coming up on the 10th. So if with your consent, I'll grab your email and add sure. you to the list. Yep, that would be great. Thank you. Yep, that would right. be great. Ken, Thank you. Ken, when I turn 60 next January, can I still come? You no. can sure. You can sure still come. I'm, I'm 60 myself. All right, I'll be emeritus. Uh, only if you grow your hair again, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> we don't we don't have short head people there anymore. All right, I'm gonna run down quickly. Ken, would you like any? Can I? Oh, really? We don't have short hair people anymore. I have no hair. Unless they're on chemo. Unless they're on chemo. <laughs> no, I. You know, I have stuff, but I'm gonna discuss it in the under sixty. That's to do with Medicare. Arizona doesn't allow you to take those optional plans. Just for your knowledge, there, Rick. Yeah. No, I spoke to. I spoke to Scott yesterday. I spoke. To All right. Jeff. Good enough. We don't we don't need to deal with that now. No, I don't really have anything. I mean, I chatted with Paul, but I don't. There's nothing really new. Um, well, we we really ought to hear about what what Paul said to you. Maybe you'll do it. We'll keep if you we'll keep it short. And let's just get a quick report on what Paul said because I think that's important. Um, for living proof, for those of you who see Ken Anderson with no hair, could you remove your hat, please, Ken Anderson? Um, right next to him on my screen is proof that hair comes back. Peter Kafka. Oh, on both sides. And Joe, look at that. 
So, um, Peter, do you have anything you'd like to talk about? No, you're, you're coming in muffled. Okay. Uh, Len, anything for you that you'd like to raise today? No, nothing, Rick. Thank you. Herb, anything for you? Nothing today, Rick. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Larry Fish, anything for you? Did he leave us already? What? The, what what's? What? Yeah, he must have left us already. What's, the tag? what's going on? With the tag? He's showing you his hair. <laughs> All right. Well, I think I think Larry. Um, I think that because he came in early, he had to leave early. That's probably what happened. Um, okay, Russell. I'm good. I'm good. Check out the hair. Oh, you're like, good. Where are you? I'm, I can't see you. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Look I at can't... the, look at the hair, man. No. <laughs> okay. I'm cutting my hair today. I'm letting my freak. Oh, there flag you are. Fly. <laughs> Let your freak flag fly. <laughs> Oh, there you go. That's All what right. I gotta say. Um, Russell and Regina, would you like some time today? We may have to unmute you. Um, ooh, ooh, I, I, I need a mute. I need a muter since our chief muter isn't on the screen. I need somebody to. How's this sound? Can you hear me? We can. Yes. Okay. I have one real quick question. Okay. Do you know of any really good pro prostate oncologist in Tampa area? Regina, hello. We'll come back to you. I'm just checking. I've got you ticked. We'll come back to you. Rusty, anything for you? You talking to me? I'm talking to you. Okay. Later if we have time. Okay. Uh, Jim Ward, anything for you? No, nothing for me, Rick. Thank you. Uh, Dennis C., anything for you today? Nothing, Rick. Thank you. Look, you look at Dennis C. He, oh, he had chemo ages ago and his head still never came back. Well, I don't know what happened, Dennis. I never had hair to begin with. <laughs> oh, that's what it is. <laughs> okay. Um, ben, welcome back. Anything you'd like to talk about today? Not tonight. Thank you. Okay. Uh, David Muslin, anything for you? I'm good, thank you, Rick. Um, uh, Jim B, anything for you? I am good, thanks. Great. Lou, anything you'd like to talk about? No, I'm good, thanks. Terrific. John, hi. Anything for you? Uh, yes, and I'm, I'm supposed to, uh, a question, and I'm supposed to jump on another call uh, in a half hour, so I can okay. be late we'll, for it. We'll get you in. Okay, okay. thank you. We'll, we'll get you in a, a, up top. Um, Tracy, anything you'd like to talk about? No, I think I'm all set. Um, I'm good. Great, thank you. Jerry P, anything for you? No, no, thank you. Not tonight. Okay. Al, anything you'd like to talk about tonight? Nothing for me. Thank oh. you. Uh, John A., anything for you? Not tonight, Rick. My connection's too unstable. Some other week. <laughs> okay. Alan, anything you'd like to raise tonight? I thought that was Al. No, nothing for me. Okay. Uh, Tony, anything you'd like to talk about tonight? Oh, uh, you know. Come on now, you're talking to an Italian. You know I got stuff to talk about. Okay, um, we'll, no, try, it's, 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 we'll it's, try and get to it's you. A pleasure, it's a pleasure talking to you guys. I sound like, I feel like I'm talking, to, uh, you guys make me feel like I'm a preschooler. I mean, you guys sound like a, a, a circle of doctors, man. You guys are advanced. But anyhow, it's a pleasure. I, I get and, so uh, much from uh, each and every one of you. Thank, thank you, thank you. And and we lost Joe Boardman. I guess he just came in to say hello, but it's, I'm so pleased that he did. Um, by the way, Joe has scaled on hormone therapy. For those of you who don't know, and there is a blog about him, you can search for Joe Boardman. Uh, Joe has scaled, I think, three or four of the highest points on the South American continent whilst on hormone therapy. So, um, as he says, there is a life after hormone therapy. All right, um, let's start off with Carl because we 
he got the short end of the stick last week. Okay. Right. Yes, and, and also at, at the end of that time, the, I see now we have 25 people on the call, but by the time I had a chance to talk, there were only maybe 12. So a lot of people dropped off by then. But anyway, uh, I started to talk at the end of that session about the fact that I'm at a crossroads in my treatment. Um, my PSA has uh, gone up after having been on Olaparib for, um, and I'm still on it now, it's almost two years. Uh, being BRCA2 positive, I was told that that would be an effective treatment and it has. I was um, undetectable with my PSA for over a year and a half. It slowly started climbing. It is now at 1.11. So it has doubled in 30 days from 0 0.68 to 1.11 and uh, had a discussion with my oncologist yesterday as to what uh, possible next steps are and uh, is anxious for me to get a scan. And we started talking about the PSMA. I have mentioned the fact that I did find in the New York area, not a heck of a lot of options, but that Sloan Kettering was offering uh, a clinical trial, and I have applied for that. Uh, the paperwork went in last week. I was told it's going to take upwards of a month. Hopefully, it'll be less, and then we're going to determine what has the scan going to show to see what my uh, treatment options will be going forward. Clearly, the Olaparib has uh, unfortunately run its course for me, um, and it's uh, it's gotten me a lot further than and the average uh, with that uh, particular medication. Uh, can I go into another PARP inhibitor? Unlikely. Can I go on to uh, a combination of abiraterone with olaparib? Um, uh, one of my oncologists had said, let's find that out. This is my, my main oncologist who I spoke to yesterday, he said, you know, you already had uh, Zytiga, AKA abiraterone. Um, you had it for six months and it failed you back then. So we don't really think it's going to be beneficial by adding it to the Olaparib. So um, I'm kind of in a, a limbo situation right now to see what my next steps are. I know there are multiple steps. My oncologist is talking about possibly another, uh, getting into another trial, possibly using Keytruda um, as an option. And we know that's relatively new for treating prostate cancer. And it hasn't really been proven effective necessarily, although I've been chatting with people on, on another uh, uh, prostate cancer support group, and I've heard some positive things about Keytruda so far. And um, so that's one that I wanted to talk about. So PSMA, again, we, we talked about that. And uh, the third item, uh, I was recently put on to Celebrex for inflammation and I'm kind of surprised that I wouldn't have been put on it sooner because isn't cancer really being considered inflammation? So that was a question to pose out. Those are my points. Okay, so um, one question I have, um, which is, uh, that is, which of your oncologists ruled out switching you to a different part I? All of them? All of them, yes. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So who um, who might have who wants to dig down on any of these issues? The trials, Keytruda, the Celebrex. Anybody want to respond on on, on any of those issues? To um... you know, Carl, it's Ken Anderson, and I just wanted to say I'd probably challenge them on the kind of re-challenge with, with abiraterone. Um, I mean, they, they gave you the information that they don't think it'll work, but do they know it won't work? And what's the risk of trying? Well, the, the profound study is, is what's being conducted with the two uh, medications. And it, it was referred to that particular study where I would not qualify because I had been previously on abiraterone to go into that trial, but... Um, you don't need to be on the trial. They can give you abiraterone and they can give you... Uh, what, what do you need the trial for? They can give you a laparib, they can give you abiraterone. 
No, I think I think Paul would probably say rechallenge with Abby. Give it a month, see what it does. There's no harm. Thank you for the information on ship. I had a great chat with the guy about insurance, by the way. Ah, okay. <laughs> Um, Carl, uh, could, let me address it, uh, Rick. Uh, the I wouldn't, if you ever do find an oncologist who says, yes, let's try another PARP inhibitor, I would suggest that first they uh, do another sequencing because we had the experience of, of um, Professor uh, Bill, uh, who was germline uh, positive for BRCA2. And when it stopped working, they discovered that he had reverted to wild type BRCA2. So in other, in other words, uh, he was no longer, you know, had the BRCA2 mutation. Um, so, but it sounds like everybody's agreed you shouldn't try another PARP inhibitor. Regarding Celebrex, they, you're right, uh, all cancer is an inflammatory response. <clears throat> Um, a re an inflammatory phenomena, uh, but they tried Celebrex for prostate cancer some years ago. I don't remember exactly how many, certainly within the last uh, five or six years, and it it uh, it, it wasn't effective. I, I mean, it's it's kind of interesting. Celebrex was just recently prescribed for me because I went to a podiatrist complaining of some foot issues. And they uh, they did some X-rays and they say yeah you have inflammation you have some tendon issues and has anyone discussed with you going into Celebrex so I'm now on it 200 milligrams. Um, well good I mean I'm sure it'll help you with with your foot issues but uh, likely not going to help with the prostate cancer. Okay. <laughs> Could I ask Glenn a quick follow up uh, on that? Yes. I don't really understand this idea that all cancer is inflammation. Well, um, the presence of cancer uh, invites these molecules called cytokines in the body that, so, so the body's response to cancer is typically an inflammatory response, just like it, its response to an infection with a bacteria or virus is an inflammatory response. Um, yeah, and, uh, you know, that's why you have pus in a wound and you have swelling from fluid. All that's part of the body's inflammatory response to uh, an abnormal uh, protein presence. Uh, so, I guess and our that bodies react that way to our cancers, even though they're our own cells. I'm sorry, say that again. And our bodies react with an infl inflammatory response to our cancers, even though they basically are our own cells. Yes. I didn't realize that we have inflammatory well, reactions to our I mean, cancer. You can you could even have inflammatory response to normal cells, not just cancer cells, th those are called autoimmune diseases like inflammatory bowel diseases. Oh. Lupus, right. Thank you. Lupus, yeah. Hub, do you want to add anything to this? Well, I would add, I would, I mean, I agree with Lynn 100%. It, basically, any kind of injury or abnormal condition triggers an immune response through the uh, macrophages always come to the area they release cytokines and it essentially triggers a, a series of immune system responses. Now, would I say that cancer, that the primary issue with cancer is immune? The answer is no. It may trigger a secondary immune response due to the cancer itself. But remember, we're using immunotherapy because you can, we're hoping to harness the immune system to combat cancer with a lot of new developments. So the immune system is intimately involved with any of the, any disease and we'd like to use it. Okay, um, Carl, uh, I have just one quick question. Last time you did a um, test with Foundation Medicine, 
what was your MSI measurement and your tumor burden measurement? Uh, low tumor burden and it was MSS, stable. Stable. So, you know, I think one point that Len makes, and it may not be a bad point, is it might be time to get another FMI because your cancer's mutating um, in response to the PARPI anyway. Maybe something came up, maybe the MSI and the TMB have changed, and that might give you a hook to, to look at something like Keytruda, like an immunotherapy drug. Um, yeah, actually, I was in contact with Foundation Medicine uh, just recently, and they gave me an updated report. I don't know if it's going to provide the same information. It really didn't change much from the, the initial report, but I was given an updated report. Right, but, but you, what we're saying is we need to retest the tumor. It's not the report oh. that needs updating, it's the tumor that needs up, updating. Because the tumor could have changed or morphed, as we've talked about before. Because the tumor's morphing all the time. The tumor's changing all the time. Your cancer's constantly changing in response to the treatment that it, it has to um, combat. I guess it's a matter of where are they going to find the biopsy because my prostate was removed and the semicolonal vesicles. Right. And so, you know, we've got to try and see where there is and that's why you're doing the PSMA scan. I got to, got to, got to yeah. move along. Um, okay. Um, let, I'm going to go, uh, Frank, I haven't forgotten. I've said you second, but John needs to leave. John Ivory. So, John, please um, let us know what's going on. You just posted something here. I yeah, you... that was. I, I, I'm not used to the posting privately uh, thing, but that was about a hernia operation for Jim Ward. So that okay. was uh, mainly for him. Um, yeah, I I uh, got a prescription for Prolia that I've got uh, osteoporosis. I got a, a prescription for Prolia that was denied by my health insurance. And I'm wondering whether uh, it's worth appealing the decision. And just for some background, I've had osteopenia since 2013. And I was on a Lendronate, which is a uh, bisphosphonate. Um, uh, for I'm, I'm checking with my primary care doc at least a year and maybe two and it didn't uh, help me. Um, I've had clavicle fractures in the past uh, five years um, and then I'm on Lupron and Abby. I've been on Lupron for uh, eight months on Abby for seven months. Uh, now, I'm told that I'll get Zometa, which is also a, a bisphosphonate, but I understand that it works very well, and Rick, I know that you were on that. So I'm just wondering uh, if anyone has any advice on uh, whether it's worth pursuing the Prolia, or should I be satisfied right. with this? Uh, who, who prescribed the Prolia? Dr. Morgans? Correct. Why don't you just go back and ask her for Exgeva? It's it's more of a pain, but you'll get it. Um, why do you say it? because it's also demosinib? Why do you think it's more likely I'll get it? Well, because it's clearly approved. Exgeva's clearly approved for, for if you've got identifiable bone mets. So if they'll approve the no, meta, I don't. I don't though. I'm I'm non metastatic. Well, she I. I still think you've got more of a chance getting the Exgeva than the pro, than than the Prolia. The Exgeva is a monthly shot. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I get it once every three months, Rick. Or once every three months, yeah. What what what? Uh, once every six weeks? Uh, no, it was a monthly shot, but it could be once every three months too. Yeah. Um, I, this is Alan, Rick. I think you're, you're absolutely right. I think you would get it approved if it goes as uh, as Exgeva. My I have asked my regular doctor about when I should start therapy because I also have osteopenia. He said, well, you can wait. He says, but you'll have to go on Fosamax first. Medicare will not pay for it any other way unless you've had a major fracture. On the other hand, when I talked to the oncologist, he said, no problem whatsoever. He said, if you have, uh, if you're going on the hormone therapy and you have osteopenia, Medicare will cover it. So um, I think you have a good case. It just depends on who prescribes it and exactly which form of that drug. I have no, I have no problem with Prolia. I get it. I've always had it approved for six years. So you know, I think I think John, what you're looking at is either appealing the Prolia 
or trying to get the same drug in a smaller dose, which is the Exgeva. And, um, and, but I, I think you'll get it. I mean, I think it's definitely worth fighting to get to know Samab rather than a bisphosphonate. Rick, can, in, I uh, just, can I just comment that yes, Russ is on Medicare and he's getting the Exgeva shot. It's approved. Right. Right, I'm actually right. on, I'm not on Medicare. I'm too young for Medicare. I'm on Medicaid. Yeah. Um, but I, yeah, I do think you've got a good chance. And I think if you go back to Dr. M and tell her that they said no, um, do, do you, what does she, does she think she, can you get, can you get me uh, Exgeva or will you help me fight it? She'll sort you. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, it was her, it was her, um, nurse practitioner that told me that I had been um, rejected. So I was surprised that she did, she wouldn't have said something. So I'll, I'll ask, I'll ask Morgan. Okay, I would go to it directly. And I'm sure and if you still get turned down again, then then yes, you know, we'll work with you, you got to go fight it and appeal it. I'm, I'm pretty sure you'll get it in the long run. I mean, you're on, you've got your you're osteopenic osteoporotic and, you, and, and you're on long term. And the indication is that you need one of these drugs. And yeah, yeah. they want to give you a meta because it's cheaper, but the the exgeva, the denosumab is probably a better drug. And it's approved. Right. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Mr. Fabish. Yes. Where, where are you? Okay, I see you. I'm here. You're here. Uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to you last week. I know you have a couple of questions. So the yes, floor I is do. yours. Okay. Um, if you remember, uh, I had uh, in an oximen and a CT scan, it showed that I had nodules on my lungs and it was metastatic prostate cancer. It was confirmed by a needle biopsy and my uh, oncologists immediately put me on Firmagon injections to start those. And I had the double dose to start about a month and a week ago. And I went in for my follow-up visit a week ago and they did labs and my PSA went from uh, 2.82 to 0.78 and my testosterone went from 298 to 15. So the Firmicon had in one month a major effect on it. And uh, I got a second treatment, a second injection, a single one. And I'll be going back in for my third visit right before Christmas for my third injection. Uh, my oncologist uh, said that he wants to be more aggressive with me because of the lung nodules. And he is thinking about and recommending that I do uh, chemo starting January. And uh, he wants six treatments at three weeks apart of, I think it, it's pronounced docetaxel is Correct. is what he's recommending and then he wants to follow and continue the firmagon and he wants to follow that up with um uh, uh apalutamide apalutamide uh pills and continued Firmicon injections after the chemo. Um, now I did read and I posted to everybody, I did read in a couple places that the uh, compare the doxetasyl to cabazitasyl. Cabazitaxel. Yes. Uh, and they said to, uh, and when I read these, it uh, it said that there are less side effects from the cabazitaxel uh, as opposed to the docetaxel, right. and so, and so 
explain to you my why. Question uh, is, so let my me question why. is, uh, is there a good comparison of those two that I can take back to my doc? Okay. So let, let me explain to you why, because the FDA approval for cabazitaxel is to follow tocitaxel if the disease recurs. So it's rarely used as a primary treatment. It is on occasion used as a primary treatment, and some of these guys <laughs> may know the ins and outs of how you get cabazitaxel before docetaxel, but you've got to have a doc who's willing to go to bat for you to get it. And a lot of the times they will say, we don't want to use up the cabazitaxel now because what if we have to give you a second round of treatment? So somebody we were talking to before had had docetaxel, um, I can't think who it was earlier on tonight. And um, you know the, the, the thought was, maybe we should try um, cabazitaxel after the docetaxel. So that's the basic, that is the, the main reason why uh, they don't offer you cabazitaxel first, because that it was not approved in that context. Anybody want to con comment on docetaxel versus cabazitaxel? Yes, Ken. You know, Rick's comment about using cabazitaxel as a second kind of taxane-based drug is 100% true. I mean, the, the whole idea of sequencing and um, cabazitaxel is approved after one uses docetaxel. So if you haven't had the six rounds of docetaxel, that's probably why your doctor has asked for that first. Mm -hmm. And and quite honestly, you look fairly healthy. So, I mean, I've done 10 rounds or we'll do 10 rounds this Friday. I mean, there's a little procedure which I'd be happy to go over with you offline. But it's just kind of what I do to get prepared for docetaxel and how I deal with the four or five days of side effects. I, I would like to hear that, yes. Well, uh, you can... Put your email in the chat window and I'll give you a, or a cell phone number and I'll give you a buzz. Sure, I'll put both. Okay. I appreciate that. You're welcome. Um, any, anybody else have any comments on this? Um, a, the protocol, um, six rounds of chemo followed by apalutamide um, or cabazitaxel versus docetaxel. Well, I would say that uh, Frank is right from what he heard or read that cabazitaxel does in fact have fewer side effects than docetaxel. And there was actually a crossover study done with men who received either docetaxel first followed by cabazitaxel or vice versa. And then it, it, the study was just to determine uh, patient preference for each chemotherapy agent, and uh, cabazitaxel was the preferred agent for the guys in this uh, double crossover trial. So, it, you know, it, it's probably a drug that has less side effects, but it's 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 more difficult to get it. And um, I don't know that we've known anybody that's done cabazitaxel followed by docetaxel. Um, yeah, I did look at a study where, again, it, it, cabazitaxel versus docetaxel was only used as a repeat therapy after docetaxel failed first, and the outcomes were that if it didn't, that much more in favor of cabazitaxel as the second therapy. So my sense is that keeping it in reserve is probably smart at this point. And yeah, the side effects are the things that we all don't like. I mean, I, I, would, I have to admit, last year at this time, I was bald. So uh, that's one of the side effects. And other than the, and Ken, I agree with you, was, I was, it was like four days after 
the injection, I was dead. I got my injections on Tuesday and Friday I was flat out. Well, I'd like to make a comment on the apalutamide. Uh, I don't know anything about apalutamide because I've never taken it, but I did my second line um, drug with my um, chemo. I, I did it at the same time. I didn't wait till after. And I, I don't know if there's any uh, benefit to waiting till after, except that's usually what doctors do. Uh, if this doesn't work, I'll try that. But uh, uh, you could probably do them together. Yeah, I mean, that, that's what, what P Peter raises a really good point. You might want to raise with Dr. Mordasavi um, whether you whether he thinks you should start the apalutamide sooner. Uh, you know, why is he having you, why is he having you wait? Um, I mean, it is typical that you wait, so he's not off course. And Peter's, doctors is, Peter's doctor is a good doctor, but he's not a typical doctor. Um, that said, um, you know, I think Peter raises a very good point, and that's why we're here, is so that we can get you to challenge your doctor with, you know, um, with other thoughts. Uh, Peter, what, what, what did Jeffrey Turner say about starting the two together rather than sequentially? He thought it was, it was no problem with it. He felt that we, we went to the uh, dalutamide and the, and the chemo at the same time. Yeah, I mean, I do. I will say one thing that that yeah, you're doing darolutamide. Um, that's expanding. Darolutamide with um, apalutamide with 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 chemo is a double bang on the brain, whereas <laughs> darolutamide it doesn't cross that brain bra brain barrier. So you're only dealing with chemo brain. Apalutamide plus chemo. Is going to be a lot tougher. Well, well, if it, and Dr. Turner would have started me back on Zytiga, but I pushed for the darolutamide. Right. So that came from me. Right, but but again, um, Frank has um, clear lung metastasis. Oh, okay. So it's going to be harder for him to get the darolutamide right now. But it may not be, you know, I mean, you can raise it and it may be that Bayer will give it to you in the buddy program, uh, Frank. Uh, can, you, can you, over the chat, send me the spelling of the dare ludamide? Yes, yeah, somebody will I'll, I'll do that, Rick. Right. right. And, and the reason I say maybe is because Bayer is going to force to rethink how it's going to dole out dare ludamide. And if Bayer's willing to give you the drug, like Peter's getting, Peter's getting it through, isn't it called the Buddy Program, Peter? Originally it was. Peter, you're breaking up. So sorry. Originally it was a two-month trial. But then I applied for the patient assistance, and I've been getting it all year. From, from Bayer and I just applied again. Okay, I'll, I'll repeat that for you. Originally, it was called the Dude Program, and it was for two months. But uh, when they came to renew it, they agreed to give it to Peter, and they've continued giving it to Peter. And I think what you might find um, is that they're going to be more generous in who they give it to, um, because it's going to be tougher to prescribe it. Um, with the innovation of the PSMA scan. So you never know. And you know, the darolutamide plus chemo is doable. Okay. All right. Can, can uh, those I... are good questions. Okay, we'll, get, we'll, 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 keep, uh, we'll keep moving and we'll go to the Hoovers. Are you... Unmuted, muted. I can't. Where's my, my my master of the mute? Are the Hoovers on? Yes. Speak up. I think. Uh, 
Am I on? Yes, you're on. You're on, and your wife's on. So who's going to speak? Oh, the boss. The boss can speak. Okay, we'll let the boss speak. Go ahead, boss. <laughs> I prefer he speak. My only question is: uh, Do you any of you guys know of a really good prostate cancer oncologist specialist in the Tampa area? Because I just learned today that. The oncologist we're seeing who seems to be doing a decent job does not specialize in prostate cancer. Well, if I if I remember correctly, you told us that you saw the um, the head of the group in um, at Moffat. We did, we did. That was for a second opinion who approved entirely of what Dr. Wright was doing. And and that doctor, as I recall, was a was a prostate cancer oncologist, correct? Correct, correct. So, um, you know, why would you not want to go back to him? Well, that was our my initial thought. Uh, I just wondered if you, you guys seem to know all the doctors in the field, and I just wondered if you had a doctor you would recommend. The guy we saw was Dr. Jad Chowdhury, C H O W D R Y. Right. Um, well, look, here, here's the thing. We, we never really found a go-to doc um, oncologist either in North Florida or in South Florida. And so generally what we do, if you can travel, is try and su suggest people go to MD Anderson. That said, um, this is a different time and it's not great to travel unless you drive over there. And I think that in light of it not being a good travel time, if you don't want to drive over to MD Anderson, I would try Chowdhury. All right, thank you. Your turn, Russ. Oh, hold on a second before we go to Russ. Anybody else want to comment on that? Yeah, Rick, I do. Please. So uh, an hour south of uh, Tampa is Sarasota. And, yes. And, and there's an excellent uh, That's right. uh, DU medical oncologist in Sarasota. Her name is Elizabeth Guanchil. Uh, I'll put it in the uh, chat window. I, I, I am using her when I'm down in Florida. Uh, she's uh, Harvard educated. Uh, Mass General, Dana Farber Fellowship, you know, she's she's top rated. Thank you. Quite right. I forgot, I stand corrected, I forgot about that, Len. You really yep. liked her last year, didn't you? Yes, very much. And she, uh, uh, I mentioned her to Dr. O when I was up in New York, and uh, he said, uh, yeah, she uh, he he was with her at Dana Farber for a while, and he said she's excellent. So I think that's a really good recommendation, uh, Regina. How long would it? How long does it take you to drive from where you live to Sarasota? Probably about an hour and a half. Hey, well, that that's doable. I mean, it's not like you're going to be there all the time, and you know. I Agreed. Think okay. Oh boy, did I spell her name wrong? Thank you, <laughs> Doctor Elizabeth. Yeah, I'm sorry. I I hit the uh, return before I put in her phone number. I'll put it in. I'll put it in now. Okay. Okay. Um. All right, Mr. Hoover, you're up. Mr. Hoover has questions that maybe somebody can help me with about hot flashes. What what is everybody else using as far as a drug to supposedly calm hot flashes, or what would you recommend? Who who who? What we we tried this with your wife last week, and everything we tried, she said you'd already taken. So, okay. We've, we've been shot down big time here. Okay. Russ. We've been shot down big time, but let me uh, see, see what ideas. Guys, who, who wants to who wants to come up with a hot flash solu solution? Anybody? 
Um, depending on how you feel about it, marijuana works beautifully. Uh, and the combination of a CBD with THC, the combination is what you want. And uh, believe me, it uh, calms them down, but they're still there. So I just uh, read an article about sage tea and women use it for uh, hot flashes and it's been around for a long time. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm just now starting it. Uh, and I'll tell you in about three weeks, as they say, it takes, it takes about three to four weeks because you're talking about an herb and it's got to get a blood level in your body. And so, uh, but that's the other thing. So those are my two suggestions. Would you spell that last one, please? Sage, S-A-G-E. Or just sage. I was yep. trying to make, I was just trying sage. to make, is that a tablet or a liquid or what? Tea. No, it's, uh, it's a tea and it comes in uh, tea bags, in round tea bags. Okay. Um, it's not all that expensive. But, uh, and it's got a pretty good taste to it. So uh, they recommend that you drink two to four uh, cups of it a day. And they said, you'll see effects in uh, the average effects start in three to four weeks. Okay, thank you. Look it up. You can uh, look it up on Amazon uh, or the internet, but uh, I bought it through Amazon. Okay. Um, is that Mexican sage or is or is the U.S. sage okay, Jerry? You know, I wouldn't answer that usually, but I'm looking out at a nice ocean that's calm right now, and yeah. the mountains. I've got both the ocean and the mountains, <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> That's all I'll say. Okay. Well, I got to tell you, it's not. It's a little. It's not Mexican. At least it's chilly for me. It's chilly for me up here. So, uh, so uh, maybe I need to come a little further south. Uh, the the Hoovers don't know, but Jerry lives in Mexico. So, um, so that that's why we said that. Now, there was a there was a suggestion we made last week, Russ. But your wife swore that you were petrified of needles. But the one thing that we know um, fairly well, and it's based on clinical trials that does work is acupuncture. And the doctor mm. and the acupuncturist know the points. So if you could um, maybe get some of that medical marijuana before you go to the acupuncturist and then go into the acupuncturist, Maybe they could stick, and the needles are really not bad. You barely feel them, but you may get some really good, um, you may get a really good response. You know, the, the standard drugs we know you've tried, like uh, Megase, Megastrol, um, Depo Provera is another one, D E P O P R O V E R A, um, but but the they have some disadvantages. Um, so you know i if it were me i would be trying the acupuncture the problem with the <clears> acupuncture <throat> is you have to go back every three weeks or so but you may get some relief off of it anybody else got any tips yes tracy uh so i get i get a little concerned about piling drug after drug after drug on top of each other so i quite honestly i've gone with the i'm trying to roll with the hot flashes and uh Basically, it's t-shirt. Uh, I, you know, I, I have integrated marijuana into my, uh, you know, uh, needs as needed. I might as well enjoy it as well, since hey, it is cancer. And um, you know, the other part of that too is just uh, acupuncture. I absolutely love it. I think it's like one of the best uh, treatments out there. I mean, it's great for stress uh, along 
with you know hot flashes as well. So um, I can't recommend. I would recommend you know definitely you know marijuana and acupuncture. Okay, does does the acupuncture last for a long time? About three weeks. About three weeks. Okay. Rick, I'd like to make a quick comment. So I was doing acupuncture for my um, my neuropathy, and I was going to a chiropractor for a, a neck issue, but I, I cut it all out because I'm I'm really scared right now going to these doctors that see patient after patient after patient. Um, it makes me a little, makes me a little nervous. We weren't dealing with COVID nineteen. I'd, I'd jump at it, but uh, I've canceled all those kind of auxiliary. So I would go with smoking grass or whatever it is. Uh, that's a good point. Own rather than seeing other people. Okay. Well, I'm done. I would just mention that, and you guys emphasized it here before, was exercise. And, you know, it's a daytime thing. You're getting hot flashes. And you have the opportunity to exercise through it. I think that's a great thing. I totally agree with Tracy. I hate to pile medication on top of medication, and uh, and if it's if you can't if it's a problem with sleeping through the night, the marijuana is like great, you know. And I combine that with uh, trazodone, and I sleep like a baby. But I, I still get up to pee and stuff. But that hey works guys, for me. I've, I'm I'm keeping an eye on the clock here. We've got two more guys to visit with. Um, Russ and um, uh, to, to distinguish Rusty, I should say, and Tony, and we've got to finish uh, in about. We've got to finish by five of the five of the hour because we have to close the room to um, hey, separate Rick, the just, recording. I just like to mention for those of you that are older that think smoking marijuana is smoking the bud, having to deal with like a bong pipe or a joint or something like that. You can actually smoke it with this little pen. It's a vape pen, a battery pack with a little cartridge on top. So you don't have to actually smoke marijuana. It's a vaporized um, blend of THC and CBD. That being said, that's about all I wanted to say. Okay. And I don't know, um, is, is medical marijuana legal in Florida? I'm not sure. Yes. It yes. Is. It's okay. legal. You have, get, you have to get a certificate, but it's legal. Okay. You so, can uh, that that same combination that Ken's talking about with the vaping pen and that take in a pill form, because I just it just I didn't like the smoking and that, but uh, they've got different uh, levels of uh, milligrams for. Uh, capsules as well. So you have a full choice of what you want. And, how, and, how to and take gummies, it. gummies, gummies. Mr. Fish says gummies. Gummies are great. Okay. Yeah, that's true too. You oh, can okay. also get cookies. Although you have to watch the sugar. You know, you don't want to be taking a bunch of stuff with sugar in it. That's absolutely true. All right. Well, listen, we've given you a couple of ideas, Russ, that Russell, that, are, that are not drug based. When I say drug based, pharmaceutical drug based and um, work with them a little bit and then come back and tell us and then we'll see what we can come up with next time. I'm, I suspect it'll be something different, but um, try working with a couple of those ideas. Russ. Will do. Will do. Thank you. Sure. Um, Rusty, are you still with us? Oh no, he left. Uh, I think he left early. Uh, he's on a call. He's on. He's there, but he's on a call. He's oh, holding he's his there, phone. He's on a call. Yeah, I see. Okay, so we'll go to Tony. Tony, you got five minutes. Okay, I'll try to. I'll try to capsulize it. Okay, uh, basically. <clears throat> Uh, my question is, um, okay, uh, uh, my, my oncologist said, um, okay, I've been taking Lupron and Quesadex 
for a long time and it's been working. Uh, my PSA is, I, I can't exactly remember like, like 0.0, .0 but it's really, really low. And the thing of it is, uh, I know, I, I, I know you kept saying, Tony, eventually that loop run is going to quit working. I got that. And, uh, uh, 18 to 24 months, I think I'm on like my 26th month of the Lupron and everything's fine. Now, here's the thing. Um, he wanted to know if I, instead of going on, he, he wanted to know, uh, you can stay on the Lupron, but if you want to go on the Abiruteron, you can do that and quit taking the Quesadex. And the Abiruteron, which is nice about that, because you know I am, you know I'm, um, you know I'm on Medicare, and I'm on, uh, you know I'm I'm uh, on Social Security, so you know I'm not uh, wealthy, is what I'm trying to say. And I would be able to get the Abiruter on free. <coughs> and the thing of it is, the, the the bottom line is that you know the choice is mine. But so far, uh, it, it, the Lupron and the Quesadex is working. And, and I know the Quesadex isn't as strong as, like, uh, you know, like, say, like Lupron or uh, I would imagine it's not as strong as Abiruteron, although they work differently. <clears throat> so the question I wanted to ask, oh, by the way, I just remembered this. Does anybody uh, – I wanted to go to um, – See, Dr. Um, oh, Jim Barnes told me. Uh, actually, Jim Barnes goes to uh, Dr. Appleman out of Pittsburgh, but he's not in my network, so I can't go to him. I was going to go to him for a second opinion. So they told me I have to stay in Ohio because that's where I'm at with my insurance. And I was wondering if anybody heard of a Dr. Abraham, who's supposed to be really a great oncologist at the Cleveland Clinic. Has anybody heard of him? Um, okay, so let's first of all, t we we can we could find a name for you, I'm sure, in, in Ohio. Um, okay. But the but the issue is that whoever you see must be a prostate cancer oncologist. They've got to be a prostate cancer oncologist, not just any oncologist. Who Abraham may be great. Um, but you need a prostate cancer oncologist, and I think there are a couple that I know of at the Cleveland Clinic. They're okay. Um, we've got mixed reports on them. I'll see if I can dig up the names for you. Um, if I cannot right now, I'm making a note to to send to you later. Um, but one of our advisory board members uses the Cleveland Clinic and and has gone there. So, um, but what I don't understand is I thought that you lived in a suburb of Pittsburgh. No, no, I live in Ohio. I live in I live in Shady Side, Ohio, which I'm only about an hour away from Pittsburgh, and that's why when Jim Barnes, uh, okay, uh, who lives in Pittsburgh, said that he goes to Doppel, he goes to Doctor Appleman, he thinks the world of him. That's why okay. I hurried up and jumped on that because I could I could be there. In an hour. Okay. Um, all right. Well, where, where's this? Here, is this one more oh, thing? Oh, oh, Tony, this, hold where? on, because we don't have a lot of time. So look, I want to throw it out to the guys. The drug he wants to put you on, by the way, is abiraterone. It's it's yeah. That's, I got it wrote down here. Yeah. Abiraterone, and yeah. that um, we'll just call it Abby. And um, what thoughts does anybody have to move from? Lupron plus Quesadex to Lupron plus Abby. Who wants to chime in on that? What would you guys do if you were faced with a situation? Would you go, would you make that switch? Anybody? I would, yeah, Rick. I would, I would just be confused on what you're trying to accomplish by switching. Your PSA is extraordinarily low and um, just wondering what would what would cause you to change? Well, I think part of it is financial. He can get Abby for free, and he's got to pay for Lupron 
and it, no, 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 I'm not, I'm not paying for Lupron. Right. I'm, I'm also, I mean, I'm, I'm also that because, right. And Casodex doesn't cost anything. Casodex uh, is thirty six dollars a month. Is right. my copay. Yeah. So I guess I would ask the same question. What does your oncologist hope to achieve by switching? Well, no. See, I'm no. See, I was the problem. See, he he mentioned it, and I thought the reason why he wanted to put me on the abiraterone is because no, abiraterone the lutron could work. Abiraterone. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Abiraterone. Okay. But here's what I'm saying. The, I thought that he wanted to put me on the abiraterone because the lupron quit working, but that's not it at all. He, he, I, I'm, I was the instigator. I said, you know what? Casodex is an old drug, and I don't know if I want to take that anymore. Although I've been taking it, you know, this whole time, and you know, I, I feel I'm above ground, and I, you know, even even though I got all the side effects, who cares? You're gonna have side effects. What are you gonna do? So, he, so see, it wasn't him that suggested that. He just said that you know, if you want to go on abiruteron, I can get you on that, and then you can go on the abiruteron and the lupron. But the only thing is, you're gonna have twice the side effects. Now the Casodex, you don't have that bad of side effects with the Casodex, but when you're taking, you know, the Abiruteron plus, you know, the uh, the Abiruteron, of course, as everybody knows here, it's just killed. call it Abby. Just call it Abby. Okay, I'll call it Abby. Well, yeah, the Abby. You have trouble getting it straight. Go yeah, ahead. Well, the Abby. Well, I got a lot of things <laughs> getting straight, but anyhow, yeah. here's the thing. Because I'm basically by myself. I don't have any help. You know, if it wasn't for you guys getting this information, I don't know what I'd, I'd be lost. But anyhow, the bottom line is this here. Uh, the the Abbey is uh, you take four pills a day. Right, right, okay? right, right, right. Let, let me stop you because we because because with the, it's time wise, okay? Yeah, you're gonna run out. Yeah, you're gonna run out of time. Yeah, and we know we know how you take the Abbey. There are different ways to take the Abbey, and you've also got to take it with a steroid. Um, Pregnant down, yeah, right. Right. And somebody, Peter Peter Kafka has put in the box here, you can't see it, that Jamie Abraham is not a prostate cancer doc, okay? So we'll have to get you. Are you talking about going to Cleveland? Is that where you'd go, or is there a... Is there a satellite Cleveland Clinic closer? No, I ha I have to stay in Ohio. That's right. I have but, Anthem. Yeah, but you want to go to Cleveland Clinic, right? It's not not, not no. I I, I want to go okay. to where the Let's best. Let me step back one. You told us that Jamie Abraham at Cleveland Clinic has been suggested, right? Exactly. Right. Uh, is that in Cleveland or is that at a satellite Cleveland Clinic? No, no, that is in Cleveland. Right. So Jamie Abraham is not the right doctor. All right. We'll try and come up with some names for you of the prostate cancer oncologists at Cleveland Clinic. Okay. That, that Abraham sounds. Uh... Is not, Abraham is not the doctor. Well, okay. well, 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 can I just ask you one last question? One no. last question. Cannot, uh, ca cannot Tony. Because it's 5:54, and I've got to touch base with Rusty, and we've got to close oh, this. Okay, I'll, I'll ask it. I'll ask it next time. Ask it next time, and Tony, if you come on earlier, I'll get to you earlier. Okay? If you come okay. on, at the, I, 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 I try to to get to people as they come on the meetings. That's why you were at the end. If you come in at the end, I put your name down on my list at the end. All right? Okay, I, I understand. Okay. Rusty, you got a minute or so. Sorry, it's so short. That's we called you before, but you're on the phone. That's all I need. I apologize, but uh, I was on a phone call with a good friend that needed some support. Uh, his wife had breast cancer uh, in stage four. So uh, I spent some time on the phone with him. So actually, I'm just going to pass tonight. Okay. And you'll and we'll come back to you next week. I'll I'll remember and yeah. we'll come back to you. I'm good at that. Yeah.
and tell nothing, your friend, nothing, listen, nothing major. tell your buddy to call in right now in five minutes to the caregivers group. Huh? Call him back and tell him. Tell him about Ancan and tell him we've got a caregivers group starting in five minutes. Those ladies are fantastic. Okay. All right. All right, guys. We've. I, I'm sorry that I'm closing us off so quickly. Look, I've already got one of my caregivers has come in and I'm going to have to kick her out because we're closing the room. Sorry, guys. Um, Take care. Okay. Goodbye, everybody. Pat. Hey, wait a minute. When, when's the next? When's the next meeting? Ne oh, I'm sorry. The next meeting is uh, next Monday. Yeah. At six or eight. At eight. Hey, Rick, can you send me the, the names of those other oncologists before, or you know, when, when you get a chance? Because I, yeah, there was well, uh, earlier there were prattling off some names. I got right. one, go uh, Doctor O. Oh, there were two uh, others. Go to your. Are you using a Mac? I'm using uh, no, I'm using a PC. Go to documents. When we when the meeting closes, go to documents. Okay. And you'll find the chat log completely printed out in the oh. documents. All right. Okay. If okay. you cannot find it, it's in the recording. Right. Sign up for our blog. You'll see the recording. And if that doesn't work, write me rd at ancan and I'll send it to you. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. All right, and I've got to kick the, and I'm and I'm, I'm terribly sorry, Pat and Susan. Hello, Susan. Hello, Pat. Um, I've got to kick. I've got to close the room and reopen it so that we can restart the um, your meeting. Okay. Guys. Hi, guys. All right. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. guys. Have a, have a good week. Bye, bye. Okay. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. I don't know how to close it. <laughs> <laughs>